Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. We have this. I forgot all about this. I've seen it before and I thought, oh, that's quite handy, we better use that. Oops, steady. Um, and then I promptly forgot all about it and I haven't used it since, so... Yeah. My bad. Let's bring you into here and stop right there. So we've got the fence right here, and that is in fence something. What color? What color green is that one in? You right? Oh, no. I think I need to go over here and then customize this one, and then I can see what shade of green it's got on it at the moment. There, and then I go to customize like that. That doesn't actually tell me what shade of green. Huh. What about repaint? Do you really want to... No. 20 grand to repaint? Don't think so, Sunshine. I don't think so. All right, well, let's just go into the front weights here. And I want a big ag coat. Well, I suppose actually I'll go with the Fent front weight. I'll just go with one of those. There, main color, gray. I got Deutz. John Deere, Fent Nature Green, Fent Classic. I'm thinking Nature Green is the one we're using. That's Fent Classic. It's a slight... Oh, I don't know now. We go with the duller green on that one. So I'll buy that one there. That's a 3.3 ton weight. And back there. And we want to go into baling technology here. And I wanted the Massey Ferguson baler there. This is not... A, oops, I keep doing it. I keep pressing back. I don't want to be pressing back at all. I want to be pressing, uh, I want to press on forward. I want to press forward, not backwards. Um, there, that one. This is not the Heston baler. This is a standard baler. I'm hoping that the pickup is wide enough. Because this is something that some people do with their models, right? You've got two options. We had a beautiful class baler. And the pickup reel was here. The coon ba the coon baler that we've got, which is the standard one, the pickup is like out there and out there. Whereas the glass baler that someone put in looked really cool, but the pickup was inside here. And it wasn't wide enough to go and pick up the standard windrows that were left behind by the combines and by the, the windrowers and stuff like that. Which ultimately really, really irritated me like you wouldn't believe. Uh, well, actually, probably most of you would believe it. So I've no idea if this one here is going to be disappointing or not. Now, I think that I did get that right because I'm pretty sure this is Fent Classic that we've got on this one. Um, I'm going to have to... I'll tell you what. We'll go like this. I'm going to have to get in behind that weight because it puts it the wrong way round, doesn't it? So go there like that. And then I'll pick you up like that. Is that the same shade? I don't really know. I think it's... As well, maybe it's not. Maybe I should have had the other one. Oh, well. So then we can go on to you right there like that. Now, lower variable bail capacity, change bail capacity. We press K. So at the moment we've got four. Press it a six, eight, ten thousand, twenty thousand. And then you can drop back down to 1,500 litres. So you can make smaller bales if you want to. If you've got, like, a really small-scale farm, then you can do that. So I'm going to go with 8,000 litres per bale, like that. Oops, I didn't do that. I wanted to do that. 8,000 litres like that, and we're going to head up to the field and see what this one is like. You know what? I'm just going to cut across here now. Um, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna bother going the other way. We'll unfold this one as we go along. It's got a, I, I like that he's got a nice, big, long bale shoot on the back. I think that's quite... a good little feature of it and the big test is going to come up here we're going to see exactly how wide the pickup is on this one if it's if it's the right width for what i want then yes we will keep it if it's not then it's going to um be discarded in shame and disgust and we're not going to use it so let's go up to there and Absolutely no way am I keeping this bait. Look at that. Look. Look right there. That is an automatic fail. It's not on the outside there, which means that the windrows 
you, you've got to make you've got to make allowances for how the game does it. And look at that. It's not even picking up the stuff that is underneath the actual pickup, right? It's, there's a it's it's so it's cut in so fine that it's not coming out, it's not grabbing that. It should get more than that. Even if it's just going for the bit that's active. So yeah, it's a really good looking baler, but absolutely no way that one I've I've committed that one to um oblivion. We're not keeping that. There's no chance. Uh, cause you look at this. Right, we need something that is going to be slightly wider. And yes, you can bang on about realism all you like, but when you've got when the game itself leaves the windrows in bits like that, there's not a lot that you can do about it. Right, the game itself leaves the windrows like that. So the game itself is not leaving the windrows in a hundred percent realistic fashion. Therefore, if you've got the bailer picking them up in 100% realistic fashion after the fact, it's going to completely obliterate the whole thing. It's just going to make it look really untidy and messy. If you've got one that's not leaving it there quite realistically, you need the bailer to be adjusted also so that it can also pick it up. So we're going to bring it back, and this is a wonderful feature of Seasons that I really, really do like, is you bring that one back, and because we've owned it for less than 30 minutes in game time, we're able to return it for all the money that we paid for it. So we go right there, I go sell. Do you really want to sell this vehicle? Yes, okay, and 125,000 is basically you can get the machines on trial. So that means that we're going to have to go for a different bailer. And that's my standard choice because that one does actually come out wide enough to pick things up but i'm thinking we're gonna try at least try see if it'll work i'm tempted to go with the deutz up here um that's the class one which is the same as that massey ferguson unfortunately it looks like it no it's not just a reskin of it. but yeah I'm, I'm bitterly disappointed because that massey looked really cool i like that um no, we're going to go back down. Oh, I see. This time we don't have the New Holland Square Baler, but we do have the New Holland Square Baler available over here. We've got one of them. We've got the Big Baler right there, and then Big Baler 1290 by Stevie. Um, he, he did both of those. No, it's this case one right here. That's the one that I want. We'll try that one, and we'll see whether this one is going to perform correctly. It's got a wider pickup on it anyway. You can see that. It's physically got a wider pickup than the other one had. So we'll go with that one. Give this one a whirl now. We'll take a quick shortcut up across the fields. Get this one unfolded. And let's have a look and see if this one has got the much needed width. The width that we all need. Well, actually, first of all, we're going to just change that over so that we go up to 8,000 litres per bale. Because it only does it uh, once you've started, ba uh, when you've got an empty bale. When, if you've got a part bale, uh, it won't do it. So you've got to have it exact. It's easy with a round bale, but with one of these, you've got to make sure it's empty. So it does get a little bit more difficult to do that. Now, where is the outside edge? That's They're still not as good. I think it's slightly better, but it's not as good as the base game Coon one. Is it? At the base game, we'll try this baler. We will try this baler. It's it's definitely better than the last one, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure. So we'll go whizzing on round. Try doing a little bit of bailing. We'll see whether this one is actually suitable. If it's not, then fine. We will condemn it and we will go and we will settle for the base game one. Um, unless I can widen this one at some point. I'm not really sure. I think we'll... I mean, I'm hoping that we can just stick with this one and this one will be fine. So we'll we'll have hay here now anyway. We've, we've got plenty. And, and look, I'm already leaving bits behind. Now, I know for a fact that going over these big clumps with the coon one, you can just pick them up. But there, I'm going right in the middle of them. It's infuriating. Why do they make the pickup on all the balers too small? I mean, yeah, I know that we did have, like, the really big rake. So, possibly it's a little bit much, but honestly, it, there doesn't seem to be any need for it. You, you don't need to have the baler like that, do you? There's, I mean, what, what possible advantage is it going to be to force people to have a baler like that? Other than, you know, getting a, a, a bad mark on it. So, I'm, I'm going to go like that. There. And then I'm going to dump these two bales out, like that. 
And I'm not going to sell this baler back yet. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go and get the coon baler. And we can just try that one. Uh, there's a couple of clumps that we'll be able to test it on down the other side. Because I'm pretty certain that the coon baler will actually go through and pick everything up. So we'll leave this one right here. And we'll run down and grab the other baler a second. I'll run this one up to the field. We'll just change the bale capacity up to 8,000. And we will see. Now, we'll see which one is wide enough. You know, if this one does actually end up being the same as the other one, then obviously we're not going to worry about it. But one of these we can now send back and one of them we will keep. So if I come up here, actually, you know, I'm going to put it in exactly the same tracks as the other one. So we'll be able to see if it's going to pick up anything extra. So if I come up there, like that, start the bailing. We're already on 8,000 litres, and I go right through there. Is it going to get any more? It did. Look at that. Both sides, it gathered up a little bit extra. Both sides, it picked that up. So this is the one that we want, which means that we're going to go and sell the other one. Now, do I get the full refund if I sell it straight from here? Or do I actually have to take it back to the shop to get the full? 155,000, I do get it right from here in the field. So there we go. We'll sell that one back. And looks like we're going to be sticking with this baler. So the base game baler actually has a wide enough pickup on it for everything. Whereas all of the other balers, everybody has decided to be clever and make these balers much more realistic. Which basically just makes them much more useless for purposes of gameplay. Um... I might actually alter one of them, but honestly, I'm, well, I, I, I don't know at the moment. I don't know. I'm, I'm genuinely thinking about it. But look at that. I'm driving right where I was driving last time. So I'm driving dead center on the clumps that are left behind. And this actually works. It actually picks it up. And that's what you want. You don't need a baler so realistic that it's going to leave behind half of the material on the ground because the game doesn't realistically leave the um, the clumps of stuff on the ground in the first place. So you, you've got the game doing something that's slightly unrealistic, and then you've got people insisting on pushing out balers that are super realistic and therefore can't compensate for the unrealistic bit that the game itself is doing, and you, you're left with all these little bits all over the place. And I can tell you, like, you, you watch a lot of... Um, I've seen quite a lot of streamers doing it. I've seen other videos where it happens where people go up and down with the balers and there is little bits of the crop left everywhere in the field, right? For one, anybody that has OCD, it looks awful. It looks genuinely, genuinely terrible. Um, but on top of that, I, you know, I frequently laugh at people for saying no farmer would do such and such. I'm not going to say no farmer would, but most farmers would not go leaving clumps of material all over their field like that. I mean, yes, you do get some clumps left behind when you're busy doing stuff, and you normally you turn the animals into the field, and the animals will go and pick it all up. Um, so I'm not going to say that no farmer would, but the majority of farmers that I know would be horrified at the thought of leaving behind hundreds of little tiny clumps all over the field. And that's the bit, that's, that's kind of the point that we need to make with this, is that the balers, by being super realistic and on the very outside edge of what they can pick up, um, I mean, some of them aren't realistic, some of them are too narrow, that... Um, they're right on the inside, just on the edge of where the actual pickup tines are, rather than on the outside edge of the entire pickup reel. Um, the baler in real life will go right out to the edge. The tines pick stuff up, and then there's material outside the edge of the tines that will also be picked up. So those balers are definitely wrong. Um, but then the ones that go just to the very outside edge, you, you're pushing for absolute realism in the creation of your baler, and... Where it's falling down is that the game itself is not producing absolute realism with the way that it's leaving the windrows behind. And therefore, your baler appears worse than it actually is. If you overruled the slight realism and you gave it just a little bit of a tweak outside each edge, like this baler here has done, 
then it would compensate for that and the overall effect would be a lot more pleasing. It would be a lot more forgiving for gameplay for a start, but it would also be a lot more enjoyable for people to go and use. And that's a big point on it, I think. Uh, making it enjoyable for people to use. It's not just about, oh, it's got to be like this because this is absolutely real. Yeah, but if, if you're going for absolutely real, then why not correct the bit where the clumps beforehand are being left in something that is not absolutely real, right? You, you, you're taking realism to something that realism has already been removed from, or, you know, uh, uh, to a certain extent, anyway. I'm not saying it's completely gone, but to a certain extent, the realism is already removed by the uneven rate of the the wind roads and just how wide they are when you're going through and therefore it, it kind of it, it changes things a little bit um, but anyway we're gonna stick with this baler for now we might go and get the case one another time i might um i might widen it or something like that i'm, I'm not quite sure yet but uh, we'll, we'll gather up all of this hay we've got several bales here we've definitely got plenty plenty of bales for keeping the horses out of mischief for a little while we will come up here with a trailer and we will gather all of these up and we need to take them down and we need to stick them in a shed somewhere. Now, there is an auto-loading shed like the one that we used to have in FS17. We definitely used it in the Estancia La Pancho map. Um, La Pancho, did I say? La Pacho. Estancia La Pacho. Um, anyway, we used it in that map, but I can't remember if we used it after that or not. I think we did at times. We did use it uh, other times as well. But honestly, it's... I mean, the mod itself is absolutely great. I really like it. But I wasn't sure whether I wanted to use it in this series. I mean, I think we probably will end up using it because it's such a good mod. And you just put the bales there and it automatically stores them away for you. You can't really go wrong with that, can you? I mean... That, that there's nothing really that you can complain about with uh, the, a shed. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not particularly realistic. I'll grant you that one. But, I mean, the, the actual shed itself is brilliant. It, it's absolutely wonderful the way the shed works. So I'm seriously considering using that one as part of the series. But I haven't got it yet. I haven't actually got the mod active on the map. Um, so we'll... We'll just go and put these somewhere normal for now. We won't worry about storing them anywhere else. It's quite cool being able to watch the baler as you go up along the rows like this. And that's the good thing about the GPS. Um, well, also the standard hired help as well when you're raking. Is that you can leave these dead straight rows everywhere you go. Which means that you can then go and use the... You, you can sort of zoom in like this and you don't have to worry about drifting off the rows too much it's reasonably easy to follow them i mean yeah you're still going to drift around a little bit as i've just proved but not so bad that you go missing stuff at least not so bad that you're going to go missing stuff with this baler though i don't think that we'd have been able to have such a clean and tidy run with the other balers that we've been looking at which is altogether disappointing i am i, I i've got to say you, you probably guessed by now I am disappointed by all of those other balers. The fact that they've, all of them, every single one of them has put the pickup reel and uh, put the, the pickup width in from the very outside edge is, is, I can appreciate why they want to do it. Honestly, I can, but I am, I'm still, I'm really disappointed with all the balers. Right, all of those balers that I've tried, when well, I only tried two on here, but I have tried several others as well. I'm just disappointed with all of them. I, I, I feel genuinely let down by every single baler because of the fact that they've gone and done that. And, um, yeah, I, I like the rest of the baler. I like everything about the rest of the baler, but I don't like the fact that it's squeezed in so it's it's so unforgiving when it comes to picking material up now i i do put in ratings on the different tools that i use and and the different things because i've uh, got to rate everything from in game now and you can rate it out of five stars and every you know i'm when it comes to pickup reels that is a reason for me to mark it down i'm not going to give it zero to a one star or whatever it is um I'm not going to do that, but it would definitely 
I'm I'm torn between not rating it at all and giving it a four out of five stars because of the width of the pickup reel, not because of the model. The, the model and everything else is great, but the actual physical pickup, um, the, the the actual quantity of material that it will pick up and put into the front of the baler, I am um, you know, I would seriously consider giving those balers a four star rating rather than a five star rating because. The baler's not doing what it should be doing. It's not picking up the material. It's, and I think that the people who have designed those balers should take into account the way the game works rather than the way they think. That's that's that. I think that's the crucial bit. When designing a mod, and this is how I tend to judge mods, is how does the mod work with the way the game works, as opposed to. How does the mod work with the way the mod designer wants the game to work? And I think that's the crucial bit. I think that is the big difference, right? The way the game, the way the mod works with the game is one thing, but it's quite often slightly different to the way the mod works with how the mod designer wants the game to work. Those two are very often i found that they can be different things and if they're different things then invariably the way the mod works with the actual game is not quite as good as what it could be and not quite as good as what it should be and that's to me that's that's a reason for marking it down those balers have been designed with the way that the get the mod designers want the game to work as opposed to how the game actually does work and that's the bit that I'm disappointed with. That's, that honestly, is it's um, I, it I, I've not really looked at that many balers before, and I'm really quite disappointed with them overall because of that one little bit. I mean, it's 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 not like a major thing or anything, but it's still, it's enough to sort of make me think. Well, I'm when when you use something and it's just a tiny little thing that is out, and that's enough to completely ruin your experience with it then, yeah, you know, that's that's the kind of detail that should be looked at overall. And I would have said that the pickup width on any machine is quite an important minor little detail. Get that wrong, and it can ruin the overall effect of the entire thing. And that's, that, for me, is what has just happened with those balers that we've tried out. It's a bit late for putting on my, ble um, my, my beacons now, isn't it? And that... That for me is is what's just happened. We've um, we've tried out those balers and they've all been spoiled by one tiny tiny little detail. And there's not a lot we can do about it now. It's already happened. They've already been my dreams have already been crushed, and that's the end of it. What's the difference between these two? That one is seventeen thousand five hundred. Uh, easy auto loader. This one is 16. Th oh, that's because that one's got... It doesn't have the lades on the front and the back. And we're going to go with this one because we're not doing round bales. So we'll go for the cheaper one. And we don't need to pay for the lades on it. Do that. And then back. And we've got some other auto loads. Well, actually, we, we don't have a huge amount of them. We've got some other auto loads right there. And there's nothing else that I want to get at the moment. We'll... Consider at some point another shed. Well, actually, maybe we should consider another shed now so that we've got somewhere to go and put this hay. Because uh, storing the hay is quite a crucial thing for when we start getting rain, which is probably not going to be very long now. Right? We're, we're not going to be far off of getting some rain. Okay, we, we probably shouldn't be going round corners so fast that that trailer is dancing like that. I'm going to go this way. We will go up here and go across the bridge, and then we can go up the hill towards the um, the, the, the other bit up there. Go up round here. Grab those bales. Bring them back down to the farm. We've got hay already in for the horses. We just need to... Actually, how much hay have we got in for the horses? Right now... Let's make... I want to look... There. Hey, 3,862 is what it will allow in there. Now, I've got 8,000 litre bales. 
we might have a slight problem with this. Right, that's as much as we can put in to the horse pen. And I don't know if putting in an 8,000 litre bale will actually put in all 8,000 litres or if we will lose three quarters, well, most of the, well, it would be most of the bale at the moment. But if you've got less than a bale's worth that you're allowed to put in there and it doesn't let you put the excess in there at the time, then we've lost all of that extra hay. Now, we do have the thing where we can open up the bales, I think. I'm pretty sure we do. We just go on to there. We want select pallets, large square bales. That'll do very nicely. Turn the work mode on, and we will go and gather these bales a second. There we go. One of 24. How many bales did we get? Let's go and have a look. We got 20 bales. So we'll get all of them onto one single trailer load. I will spin round like this. It's like I'm driving on glass at the moment quite want to do it like that and I'm not getting close enough to these bales I should probably slow down while I'm doing this that would probably make it work a little bit better but I'm stubborn and I don't want to so we're going to go whizzing around this field at breakneck speed and see if we can get the whole lot loaded up without having to slow down at all I reckon I can do this I have supreme confidence supreme confidence that I can make a mess of it that's usually what I can do. I'll have, I've, I've missed that bale there, and I managed to miss that one because I drifted out ever so slightly too far. You I can get. And then we've got to go back over this way. We've got four more bales to gather. Did it really miss that one? I thought I would have been... I thought that was close enough then. Just... It must have been out by, like, millimetres. Literally just <laughs> millimetres in order to be able to miss that one. We've got two more bales here. One and two bales. Right, we're done. We have gathered all of the bales. So now we can slow down a little bit. We go like that. And then we unload onto the trailer like that. And we put the straps on. And then we've got to wend our merry way back out of the fields. All the way down to the farm. And then we've got to find out what we're going to do with the hay and feeding to the horses. Now, the problem that we've got is... I'm pretty sure... Do, do piles of hay keep... There was something about piles of hay in the game. There was something I remember reading about piles of hay. Let's go and have a look in here. Animals, crops, hay, straw and grass. Must be bailed with loose straw and uh, only given away. Swaths, hay and straw swaths piles are reduced after being exposed to rain. Um, so we might be able to put the hay loose into the barn. Alright, I'm not sure about that. We might be able to get away with putting it loose into the barn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put one bale in for the horses. That's what we're going to do first, is one bale we're going to put in for the horses. We're going to need to move stuff around here. If we want to put a shed here, we're going to need to change things around a little bit. But I'm going to go like that, and we're going to stop there. We're going to take those straps off. Then we're going to go over here, and we're going to get this one. We have no bale spike at the moment, so we're going to need to go and get a bale spike. I'm going to take the bucket. Actually, the bucket can go over next to the chickens. Before I go and put it over next to the chickens, we're going to just scoop up the silage in front of the cows. Like this. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that... If you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.